Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio for another exciting episode of Security Matters. And I hope you're joining us today because of our guest, not me. Uh, Janet Fenner is amazing. And the uh, one benefit of COVID is that she got stuck someplace long enough I could get her on the screen. She's a busy woman. Mm -hmm. Janet, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, thanks so much, Andrew. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for that great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I know you. I just see you everywhere in the industry. You're you're really busy. I know doing so many things, right? And so now I understand you're stuck home and your your teenagers are eating your refrigerator, um, picking it clean. Yeah. yeah, seriously, you can't keep up with them at all. Every single time you turn around, you're like, I have to go food shopping again. I don't want to do that. I live in New York. The last place I want to be is anywhere <laughs> near a supermarket. So yeah. So I'm like, calm down, mm. settle down. Good. Well, I'm glad you're safe at home. You appear well fed. So you you're hanging on to the crumbs that they're leaving for you, apparently. Um, exactly. Well, so for our for our audience who may not know you and I, I think most of our industry does. But anyway, um, take us give us some sort of your history, you know, as much as you'd like to share and then, you know, kind of bring it forward through the through the industry where and bring us up to sort of where you're at today. Sure. So I started the industry probably around 1997, believe it or not, that long ago. I'm dating myself. So it has been an incredible ride. I have basically started with a small company called Temtech, who actually developed color changing technology on, on identification badges. And they actually were acquired by the Brady People ID company. What was interesting is not too long ago, I had a meeting at the VMware building in California and their actual badges were the identification badges that I, I started in the industry with. And it was pretty cool to see that that technology was still around as, as non-technology driven as it is, it's just color changing. And so uh, that was interesting. And then from there, awesome. I moved on to, yeah. So I moved into um, companies like Identicard, Brady People ID, Jam Plastics, Identicam. So it was all under the Brady People umbrella that I represented about five different brands, including Stopware, who are still a company in the industry. So I love to see them at trade shows. I love to see their growth. I still follow them. I still have really good networking relationships with them. And then from there, I went to go work for Frank Defina at Samsung when Samsung was just starting out in the industry, which was interesting because I remember even when Samsung had their first trade show, they we had people come into the booth and go, um, can you fix my phone? Do you have a charger? And you're just like, that's not what we do here. <laughs> so Samsung oh, wow. had no presence <laughs> in surveillance at all. So it definitely took a little while for us to, even though we had the brand, which was fantastic, it took a little while for us to brand that company into the product line that it, it basically served. And that was um, a great ride with Dafina. He was an incredible person, great mentor. And then from there, Samsung sold their division to a company called Hanwha. And then Hanwha um, was a big entity, loved working for them as well. And then from there, I wanted to continue my career and started working with Dawa and they were definitely very interesting. They just, they had a lot of hurdles to overcome and it was very challenging. You know, the team there is great. I still have uh, good relationships with them, but unfortunately, you know, it was a definitely hard product to position with all the, the, the laws that, that were against them. And then from there, oh, yeah. ISS came and I, I ended up going to work for them for a little while. Awesome. So, so. I, I, so yeah, so so you were at Dawa, I guess, when the the whole um, NDAA thing, when the FedGov was looking at the, those companies and going, oh, we don't know about this. I see. Yeah, that's difficult. How do you message that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It was definitely hard um to you know well it was it was i love the challenge of branding a company that for me i absolutely love is one of my favorite things to do uh the challenge the branding the getting the name out there is my fa i mean it's like it's my favorite thing to do out of anything and it's something that uh dawa needed and i loved positioning them that they ran into that whole big hurdle which was uh, um, a hard a hard thing for that company to face it was very hard even though um, sure. They had a strong product line globally. It was still a hard challenge here in the United States. Sure, yeah. So, a lot of companies have had that when they, they came here. I remember companies have come out of Australia, companies have come out of Asia. And, you know, it's 
it's not the same here. There's different different rules that we have to play by sometimes. Makes it tough. So how did the branding, um, you know, how did that passion for branding, because it's a it's sort of a unique piece of marketing. You know, I did a, a master's in comms and it was it was kind of like this shotgun thing where, you know, you got a little bit of everything. And so I think in marketing, it's the cool thing about it is you can p take a piece of it and actually, you know, um, if you're passionate about it, that can become your expertise. And it seems like that's sort of what you've developed over time. How did it f first come to that? Or was it just naturally in you to want to wanna, like shout it from the mountaintops? You know, what's interesting is I actually started my career as an art director. So my experience oh. comes as a foundation of a graphic designer. And then along the way, one of the mentors that I had in the field uh, by the name of Dana Milkey, he basically saw that I was doing more marketing than I was doing in, when I was positioning for graphics. And he saw that I had a really good knack for it. And he actually took me and transmission transitioned me into the marketing realm, which was wow. something that completely opened my world up. And it was a really great fit. I absolutely loved it. And he really took my hand into it and said, listen, he's like, this is what we're going to do. This is, and he basically on, on the field training and he he was a great mentor along the way who cemented me in marketing and from there you know this is why i always tell people if you're going to hire something somebody don't always just judge them by by their um college degree or foundation get to know who they are because they will surprise you at what they can bring to the table and just having somebody have the confidence in changing my career path has been astronomical. And even to this day, it's been probably about um, 15, 16, 15 years since I've worked with him. And I have um, Dana to thank for changing my path. Wow. Uh, or, so did you have an art background as well? Yeah, I do. I have an art, I have a, a, a degree in um, graphic design concentration in, in, in that. And, uh, and so I use that for the first uh, probably about eight years of my career in growing as an as an art director and graphics and then graphic manager and then art director and then from art director I transitioned into I stepped into marketing and it was fantastic. Does um do you did that inf inform it because it seems to me to have an artist's eye right when you talk about the passion for branding right you had to you know that there, there's some imagery that goes along with that right to help with the messaging that you that you create and so did that inform it I mean were were you making this up as you went along like for these companies that you work for and say look here's the image we need and you know or, or was it like a, a group think thing or was it more uh, you were able to drive that uh, for with some of your own vision. No, it was, it's what is great is, is having the ability to, I think the creative end of it really lent into um, the vision, the, the execution of the vision is saying, what do we about, what do we position ourselves like this? Why don't we think outside the box? And really what tied everything together, one thing that I recommend for any company out there that has a marketing department, you want to be successful. I, and I swear by this is have your marketing team go into the field with your sales team because sales and marketing seriously have to work hand in hand. And if that happens, marketing gets to learn the pain points that sales are, are trying to solve in order to communicate. If you can help mm. the marketing team understand what it is that you're positioning, you're gonna have an incredible time selling something. So the more you can bond marketing with sales, the, the more successful your company is going to be. Working in silos is, is not going to work. A lot of times I find companies that their marketing departments are like, well, why does he need budgets for that? Or why do they need this? Or why do they have to attend that? And they get very particular with their budgets instead of saying, how can I help you in the field? What is it that you're doing? And showing them and taking their hand and walking them through to a customer, getting them to see firsthand what they're trying to do is definitely going to increase the efforts of what marketing does with sales. Mm, that is a golden nugget that I think a lot of people miss. You know, the salesperson is called upon to solve some sort of problem. So when that the mm -hmm. messaging behind the products are offering those solutions, more people are going to pick on pick up on those solutions that they're looking for. Because a lot of times, most people have sort of the same problems when they're calling you know integrators up to to get help. Right? That's insightful. 
Did uh, did yeah, you yeah. did you um were were you able to spend that time in the field yourself, or did you have other, or did, was this uh, something that you just sort of pioneered and said, hey, here's here's how we're going to do this. We're going out with sales, and let's gather our info first before we get started with the you know even creating the brand. Yeah, you know, one of the companies that really um, helped my career grow, believe it or not, was Dahua because they actually moved me from marketing over to business development. They're, they were like, you know, you know a lot of people, get out there, position yourself, help us out. And being in that sales role from a marketing viewpoint, it opened up an entire arena that I was just like, wow, almost to the point that I like, I really like business development. <laughs> and you, you, don't, <laughs> you don't know it. At first I was like, well, I don't wanna do business development. And they're like, yeah, but that's what you're gonna do. I'm like, well, I really, you know, but they're like, then finally like, do I have a choice? And they're like, not really. <laughs> so uh, you move into it and sometimes the most amazing things happen outside your comfort zone. And I definitely learned that hands on. And I do thank them for exposing me to an incredible business development world that I absolutely loved leveraging the network, talking to people, trying to gain the sales, building the, the relationship. So I love that. And it's something that even when I went to ISS, I brought that business development mindset with me. And whenever our sales team had to go meet with other people, I was there along with them to help them understand our, our, our product line, lend the efforts of the sales process from a marketing standpoint, from a business development standpoint, and from the growth standpoint. So it was definitely every path that I've had has been so instrumental and educational and, and it's been such an incredible learning experience. So there's a theme that's come out here. I don't know if everybody from my viewers have picked up on it, but people see you can do stuff that you didn't know you could do. And they're like, Hey, you're going to go this way. And next thing you know, you're doing it and having fun. Uh, what do you think about that? Do, is that a, do you think more people should try things they're not afraid of? Or do you think you shouldn't be afraid to get pushed when, you know, when management or seniors ask, you know, hey, go try this. I think you'd be good at it. Yeah, never, never settle for the words. That's not how we used to do it. There's a lot of mergers going on. There's a lot of changes going on. I mean, I don't recommend anybody changing fields right now. It's just stay put. You've got a job. Enjoy it kind of thing. But as far as, career path, definitely get yourself out there. And, and I truly am a huge believer as nothing ever um, happens in your comfort zone. It's when you step out of it that not only do you learn, but you grow, you grow so much, whether it's positive, whether it's negative, whether you say I shouldn't have done that or I should do that, no matter what, it adds to who you are and who you can become. So for sure. That's awesome. I love, I love that, that optimistic perspective. You know, you got to go out there and try in the world. Okay. We're right about a good spot for a break. We're going to be, we're going to pay some bills for a minute and we'll be right back with Janet Fenner. Don't get lost. I'm Rusty Kamori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence and finding greatness. I feature a wide range of amazing guests who share valuable insights about how going beyond the lines leads to success in everything you do in life. I'm looking forward to you joining me every Monday at 11 a.m. Aloha. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Security Matters. We're live from the Think Tech Hawaii studios today with Janet Fenner. Uh, Janet, thanks so much again for joining us today. I appreciate you being here. Um, we were sharing, you were sharing like your secret sauce for marketing there. So thank you very much for that. And I know you also contribute 
to a lot of other industry organizations. So I know you're on the board of a security industry association and what an amazing organization. I mean, in this time they have stepped up massively to get out there to share information with our integrators and with our community at large. Um, I love the leadership they've taken on. Have you had a, had a voice in helping Don and the team over there get some messaging out the door? Well, it's, it's great. I love it when they reach out uh, for different ideas. One thing that we're doing is we're getting ready to hold a um, kind of like an open panel discussion regarding how to market and how to take advantage of marketing in these times right now because everybody's online, everybody's paying attention, everybody's strapped to this computer at home. So how to make the best of it with little resources and how to go ahead and, and do some branding and do some communication out there as best possible and what to look out for and and we're going to be discussing that. We're going to be discussing that and see us giving that platform, which is great. I think it's important for um, us as a as an industry to really take advantage of as much learning we can do right now or how do we get through this together. So anybody who can lend their expertise as to how do we, we get through this tough time, because it is tough, it is fantastic. And, and SIA has been putting a lot of great resources out there as to um, what companies can take advantage of, what's offered, what's happening, and they're a really good soundboard. Yeah, you know, um, to, to, a little bit to your earlier point, I've I've been listening to a lot of this and a lot of the, you know, integrators and manufacturers, people talking about what they're doing to get through and some of their strategies, but we haven't heard much from the customers and what they're suffering from, you know, to your earlier point. Maybe we need to yeah. identify some of this stuff now so that we can help them be a little better prepared next time a problem like this comes around if it you know hopefully you know whenever it does I, you know i guess we're not immune from uh future episodes or future events like this sure sure it's, it's it's a good point andrew it definitely is we have to definitely keep uh the customer in mind i mean CEO represents about 11 over 1100 companies now and they're doing as much as they possibly can to help the the smaller and the and the big companies get through a tough time like this um have, do you know of the companies in new york are they are they like because you you know you're not far from manhattan are they are they working i mean not, we're working because we're dod and critical infrastructure so the sort of necessary services um are are the companies that are in new york proper or is everybody in the security industry busy and and contributing i i was thinking of like how do you secure like these pop-up hospitals and things that they're putting like a javits center for example things like that that stuff needs security wrapped around it yeah yeah i know there's a lot of companies out there that are building campaigns right now to address the healthcare situation and to provide immediately help immediate help and immediate assistance for products and allocating resources so there are companies right now especially distribution companies that are actually positioning um uh, campaigns driven to address healthcare needs but you know everything in Manhattan. I mean, if you go in there, um, it's a ghost town. It's 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 very very wow. eerie as to um, what, what lack of um, what's going on. I have to I have to so plug in my computer. <laughs> oh, awesome! This is sure. this Sorry, is the you know I Andrew? told him you're always on the move. See, I know. <laughs> well, there you go. Proof positive. <laughs> okay, great. No worries. So the. Um, is is there um, or have you heard of um, like municipal government planning or, around? Uh, I've I've been on a bit of a platform about our industry not being engaged necessarily with the national security discussion, um, primarily because I, I we are at the infraguard level and we are you know at, at the defense industrial base level and the and critical infrastructure type companies, but a lot of our industry doesn't work there. And I, I didn't know if you'd seen or heard of any security types in the media there in New York that are, you know, Paul Schmick's an example of someone who sort of tends to get his, his uh, voice and his company elevated in the national security discussion. I see him on the DHS discussions on the news and things like that from time to time. But, you know, I, I, I haven't seen much of it out here other than, than our company. And I just didn't know what, what you're seeing in New York, you know, is, is the industry represented as a um, one of the you know solid pieces of, of industry that we need to rely upon when things go bad, or is it all oh, those are just the security guys? Uh, they'll they'll come back and sell us more stuff later. Uh, I tell you what, I have to say, I you know I I try to the only piece of news that I listen to right now is when our governor addresses um, the situation in New York. I, I think uh, Cuomo. I mean, I give him credit. He's doing a, a great job in communication. He's pulling, putting the political uh, needs aside, and he's really doing a, a 
a great job of communicating. So I listened to his communication and then I basically, I don't, I don't get wrapped up to, into it at all. I've got two kids at home that are constantly with homework and assignments and, and then the other stuff that I'm working on. So right now I've been very, very siloed as to what I do listen to on the media. So let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing because you were sharing that you've got, you may have a crossroads type of, uh, of discussion or, uh, you know, a, a self-discussion. I'm not sure who will decide. I presume it's you. Um, talk to us a little bit about that, what that's like at home when you have a lot of time to really consider it. Yeah. So I'm like, hmm. So lately what I've been doing is I've been actually doing a lot of marketing outsourcing for a few companies. I've gained a few clients, which has been really, really great. And I've been very much open to headhunting positions. I'm not actively going out there and looking for a position, but I have been reached out to regarding a few um, open positions in, within the industry. Because I, one thing that I am certain of is I do not want to leave this industry. I absolutely adore it. I've built I, my career around it. And um, there's, I will try until I can any longer, and then I'll decide to leave. But really, I want to stay embedded within the industry. So it's, it's like a part of your family. You've known it for so long. Yeah. Um, and I love the people in it and I love working this ecosystem that exists. So I'm at a crossroad right now as to do I, you know, do I take a full-time job or do I continue outsourcing and creating um, an agency type of career out of this um, opportunity? So it's a good, win-win kind of situation because I do have the ability to say what kind of position I want right now and where I want my career to go. So I can get a bit nitpicky and say yes, no, when an opportunity does uh, uh, present itself. But I absolutely love marketing and being able to outsource to different companies and different messaging for each one of them is such a refreshing um, role. I love, I absolutely love it. I have to say, and, um, each one is treated completely different and it's kind of like, a here's what you can do is like, Oh my gosh, we can do this and we can do that. And it all started because I did a post on social media saying, Hey, take advantage. I've got time right now. Anybody wants help on I marketing. Saw. I'll be more than happy. I mean, Andrew, that response has gotten almost 19,000 views, which is cool. <laughs> awesome. And it's, I know, I was like, wow, you know, so, and a few companies did take me up on it, which was great. And so I was very grateful. And a lot of them turned into potential opportunities that we're, you know, we're exploring right now, which is, you know, it, it's been really great. So I've got a few clients that I've got on board and I'm loving it. So, but I have been interviewing right now with a certain company. And so, you know, let's see what happens out of that. Good, good. It's so it's, it's so fun to have options, and I I think our industry is full of them. And I hope that our, our women in security form and that other people that are looking at our industry don't know much about it. Listen to Janice's story because truly you can move around and do things that you possibly never even imagined yourself doing, and you can contribute and be part of an amazing team in an amazing business. Right? This this industry protects lives and people. At the end of the day, who does? I've never met anyone who's in it that wants out. Let's put it that way. Right. And there's so much amazing technology in this industry. It's like there's nothing boring about our industry at all. I think may maybe it's from my viewpoint. I think this industry is super sexy because the technology is so amazing and, and what it does and how fast it's moving. It's such it's it's such a speed that we're changing technology right now that it's amazing. It really, really is. So the best thing you can do is network 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 be a part of something get yourself involved with with this industry because i swear to you you get so much back out of it you really do and i am proof positive that that's that's why i've built this network i've grown this network and now i'm leveraging this network and it's really working to my advantage which is fantastic yeah it's important it's it's fun to have all the right problems that's why i say and this industry is really forgiving you know even in in times like this probably we will grow as an industry in 08 09 we grew as an industry i think something like since 1972 we've grown in the team double double digit percentages like every year as an industry so 
that you can kind of make mistakes and kind of play around and still keep moving forward. You know, it's just, you know, you can have a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's briefly give a shout out. What do you think, um, some of the things our, our women in security forum should be working on? I know we've got a scholarship, um, uh, committee started, which is really fun. Uh, what else, what else, what other kind of initiatives you think we could do to sort of impact the industry, maybe in a place that's missing? Well, I know that we're working really hard on um, doing uh, presentations on diversifying the industry because it's really, really important. I know that a lot of people listen to Women in Security Forum and they're like, oh, women. It's not like that. It's not like we're out there burning our bras and saying, oh, women rock. It's not <laughs> like that. It's very important to have the female voice in your company. I mean, there's studies around it as to if you balance your company correctly and you give more of a female voice to it, you really do a great job at learning more about your company and how to position it and how to move it forward. Just se segment it to a, a less diverse um, experience, you're going to miss out on certain voices that could really lend and, and make your companies profitable. And there's studies on that. It's not because we're just saying it. So we're, we want to help companies out there uh, diversify. And that's one of the things we're doing. We're, we're helping those women who actually sit in the background and say, hey, you know what? You're talented. This is your worth. Let's, let's get you yeah. out there. Let's connect you. Let's move your career along. And we're all about advancing the women in our industry along or any individual in the industry along, be it women or men, but we're doing it collectively. We have an incredible core of women that I'm so incredibly grateful to be a part of. And we're an incredible pride, basically. We have each other's back. We support each other. We give advice. We, I mean, I'm on chat groups with these women about career, about family, about balance. And it's important to add that to your company. It's important to be a part of something that can really be beneficial if you look at it in the right light. That is awesome advice. Janet, we are out of time today, but I really want to thank you for sharing. That's that's from the heart. This is a great industry. Please come and join us. Um, Janet, we'll see you sometime soon, somewhere, I'm sure in the flesh. I hope maybe the fall before we all get out again. I don't know, but I will see you out there. Yes, I'm dying to, man. I'll meet you at the bar for sure. Okay. Thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate you taking the time. Mahalo. All right. Take care. Aloha now. Aloha, everybody. We'll see you.